¿Qué tal amigos y amigas? Terror Running Review, volvemos al Road Talking Review, esta vez como siempre jueves, seis y media de la tarde, con protagonista y además de ello yo te diría con protagonista de excepción. Y es que hemos repasado o hemos tenido gente de todo tipo, desde corredores, fisioterapeutas, algún que otro podólogo, gente muy relacionada, por qué no decirlo, con el atletismo y hoy os traemos... Una persona que estoy convencido de que muchos, sobre todo los más frikis, los más nerds, como dicen ellos, de las zapatillas, seguro que conocéis. Y es que, si ahora os digo, I'm Connor from Running Warehouse, estoy seguro de que muchos os suena esta voz. Así que no me voy a enrollar mucho más y os voy a presentar directamente a la persona que tengo aquí a mi lado, que es Connor Plalock. Connor, you are on live. How are you? Hey, it's great to be here. Uh, I'm excited to talk some running shoes, talk some, uh, really, any any crazy uh, questions you have come my way. It's going to be a crazy question, 100%, 100%. So, Connor, thanks to be here. Uh, I, I know you are on, on Cali, in California, next to Los Angeles. So you are at 9 a.m., 9, 4 a.m., right? So nine hours before us. Yeah, so I have a lot of questions, not just let's say, running shoe questions. I got something oh, I want to know a little bit from you because I think you are an enthusiast shoe nerd, right? But you are also a, a great athlete, or at least you were a great athlete, um, <laughs> right? No, someone, I heard about it. So when did you start to, to start running? Yeah, well, I, I, appreciate, uh, I appreciate some yeah. of the love. You're right, Always I love was. For you little bit I used to be a little bit better runner than I am now but uh, I started running at 19 yeah. years old uh, ran my first half marathon ran through high college graduated and ran with the Hoka Aggies uh, here in San Luis Obispo wow. semi-professional club team uh, never ran super fast uh, about a low 15 minute 5k runner but uh, had fun doing it and uh, had been dealing with some injuries the last couple months but we're back on it and hoping to break 15 uh, relatively soon. Oof, that's, you're gonna be fast. You have to be fast to break 15 minutes on 5K, so tough. Como vais viendo, eh, sorry, Connor, I'm gonna translate. Como vais viendo, Connor irá hablando inglés. Yo intentaré traducir lo más resumidamente posible para que un poco la conversación, incluso si tenéis preguntas, él lo ha dicho, si tenéis algún tipo de preguntas sobre zapatillas, que las lancéis. Connor nos indicaba que él empezó un poco con los nueve años, nos ha explicado un poco la trayectoria esa rápida de cómo dio el salto a la media distancia y que quiere batir, al menos pronto, porque ha estado un tiempo parado por lesiones, la barrera de los 15 minutos en 5 kilómetros. So, if you can, if you are thinking to break the 15 minutes uh, line, right? So, what shoes are you, or you think you can make it right now? What shoes are you going to pick for? That, that's... A That's a really tough question because there are so many great shoes on the market right now. If we're talking on the road, I think there's a couple different shoes that could potentially be a good option. Uh -huh. First one that comes to mind is the Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro Evo One. I mean, it's the latest, the greatest. It's a $500 shoe. It's got a lot of tech, lightest shoe on the market, 40 millimeter stack. It's a crazy shoe. And while the price tag is a little crazy, I think it's worth it if you're looking for uh, every second. So, oh, sorry. Um, you're going to give yeah. us three picks? Go for or... it. Oh, no, bueno, Connor nos decía que la primera opción que le viene a la mente es la Adios Pro Evo 1, que ya sabemos un poco cómo es. Uno, el tema del precio. Y dos, el tipo de zapatilla que es, did you already try them on or not? You didn't get the chance? Oh, yeah. Uh, you... Yeah, I, I, just got, I just got my first pair of Evo 1s. Uh, got some initial strides in them, but I'm, I'm waiting... Uh, For my first race, uh, hopefully in the next couple months, to really put them to the test. Yeah. I don't know. See, I'm not gonna pay to spend the 500 bucks. That I'm, I'm totally 100 <laughs> sure. But so two picks, two other picks for the 5K, right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think next I would go. I mean, just the classic. Uh, it, we are gonna see an update hopefully in 25. But for now, we've got the N Nike Vaporfly Next Percent okay. three. Uh, I really like the Alpha Fly as well, but for the day, you get a little bit lighter weight shoe with the Vapor Fly, a little bit more nimble shoe. The Zoom X Foam is trusted, it's proven, it's a fun shoe, and uh, really the only negatives 
I've heard with that shoe is it doesn't fit everyone's foot right. That's it right. fits good. Uh, I think it's a really good 5K pick. So Vaporfly and the third one? Third one, uh, that that gets a little tough. Maybe, um, oh. Come on. I, okay, so, I mean, do, is this going to be on the market or off the you market can, right now? You can say off the market. Both of okay, them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's a new Hoka prototype that I've been testing. Okay. Um, we're hoping to see something come to the market eventually, but it is a sub five ounce racing flat, wow. nearly max stack. I've been doing my training as I've been coming back into racing in that shoe. It's wild. It's, it's got the thinnest upper I've ever seen. It's got one of the lightest midsoles I've ever seen. Uh, I think Hoka Ooh. was a little bit heavier for a while, yep. but now they are back on track. And I think in the next year, Two, you're going to see some really cool races. This is going to interesting. That's good. Uh, Connor nos decía que segunda opción la Vaporfly de Nike, que todos los conocemos, que se adapta unos pies a otros, quizá no tanto, que también le gusta mucho la Alpha Fly. Y como tercera opción, que ya es donde digo que las cosas se ponen ya picantes, él está probando ya un nuevo prototipo de Hoka que saldrá eh, finales de 2024, principios de 2025. Dice que no ha visto nada igual a nivel de espumas, con lo cual veremos qué es esto de Hoka. Okay, Connor, let's focus a little bit on yours. So did you, I mean, you work in Running Warehouse. Running Warehouse is known as uh, e-commerce. So it's a website where you can buy your shoes, right? How many people are you on the, not just creating content on YouTube or Instagram? I don't know if you go, if you, you have the Instagram account also on them. Or how many in total, just in the US, in your department are, uh, how many people are you? Yeah, so our department uh, is considered web content. We create all the content that's on the website and on social media. There's about ten or eight of us, okay. and then we've got a marketing team that's got about five people, so they really work uh, together with us to get all the content out um, through paid advertisement. Okay. So there's about 12, 13 of us, and uh, not a big team, but we get a lot done. So, and, and also they're running the warehouse, it's in other place, right? And there's some more people working on them? Uh, in, in terms of uh, at internationally, are you uh, saying other channels? I mean, you have the five or six people in your department, you say eight oh, to 12, yeah. right? And then there's the storehouse where people work on logistics. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. So, Yeah, so here in the warehouse, we've got an entire, this isn't just called running warehouse. We actually have a warehouse that hosts all of our okay. shoes. We've got, you know, there maybe 30, 40, 50 workers in there. Then we've got a, a graphics team, a video team. Um, we, we've got every department that kind of hits all the check boxes. Yep. So in total, I think we've got 100 plus people. Vale, le preguntaba a Connor, Connor, para los que todavía no lo conozcáis. Connor, podríamos decir que es como la cara visible en el canal de YouTube de Running Warehouse. Es la persona que presenta muchos de los productos, un poco lo que hacemos nosotros aquí en Running Review, pero trasladado allí. Running Warehouse es una tienda online donde vosotros podéis comprar, también tienen la sede en Europa, y allí podéis adquirir cualquier tipo de producto relacionado con running y otras cosas. Y como nos comentaba, él en su departamento aproximadamente es unas 12 personas, más los 30 o 40 que, o más incluso, que hay en el, en el almacén central que tienen allí. Pero eso es diferente de lo que hay eh, aquí en Europa. So, uh, we also have running uh, Europe, so running Warehouse Europe, right? Did, have you ever been in, in Europe or you, you get the chance to be here? You know, I have not made it out to Running Warehouse Europe. That is a goal. Um, but, I, you know, I'd love to, uh, maybe even for, we've been talking about for a yep. while, coming out for UTMB. That, that's a great race. But, uh, yeah, in the near future, we're going to have to make, make that happen. Maybe get a uh, uh, road running review yeah. lab out yeah. in, uh, in Europe. That's great. In the studio. In the studio. Con Connor nos oh, yeah. comentaba eh, que, que quizá cuando, o le gustaría venir a UTMB, que es, ya sabéis, la carrera más importante del trail running, con Connor, y yo esto lo comento yo, nos vemos anualmente en la feria que vamos en Austin en The Running Event y siempre nos cruzamos y hablamos y charlamos un poco de la industria, etc. Uh, personal question, Connor. How many shoes do you have in your in your in your house? I'm gonna say in your house because m probably mostly of your shoes are your are in the running warehouse, but um, in yeah. your personal house, in your room or your wardrobe. Yeah, that, that tough question because it can it can vary. Um, 
I think at the at the max, I had probably about 150 pairs okay. in my room uh, in, or in, in my closet. And then uh, right now, I'd probably have just on my shoe rack behind uh, my, my little personal collection at, in, um, in the office. I've got another 75. And then in the basement, um, right? I got a lot. Yeah, exactly. So, full, full of shoes. Nos comenta que tiene 150 más 70 en un rack y dice que encima en el basement, que es la zona donde en Estados Unidos que viven siempre las casas por debajo, todavía tienen eh, más, más zapatillas. Connor, when did you realize the shoe? You, I mean, when did you start to get interested and be nerd about running shoes? Yeah. So. So uh, I was running competitively in college and uh, I just started working in the retail store here at Running Warehouse just to make a little money and uh, I started getting interested in how the shoes could impact performance. Uh -huh. Then I just randomly our video guy here at the warehouse quit. They needed someone. I got hired in, didn't even really know I was going to be doing video Oh yeah. and the rest is history. I started uh, creating review books. And uh, yeah, you know, I, it just kind of took off from there. Now, I've, I think we've got a thousand. I've probably done a thousand plus videos on YouTube. Oof. You can check in the library and then see. Yeah, I was checking this morning. How many, not how many videos did you, but um, just to get. No, because you, you already did you remember any special shoe or even any, you know, something weird, special on a shoe review? On a shoe review. I mean, something um, like, I don't know, it's something happened or something weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we've had a couple shoe reviews where you do the whole thing, you spend a full day, yeah. and uh, the the data gets corrupted. You lose wow. the files. I'm sure you guys yeah. have worked too. And a lot of times, yeah. A, a couple of them bad, and uh, it's never fun, but <laughs> when it happens, you go back out, you reshoot it, and... Uh, Yeah, it's it's uh, not a fun day when that happens. Ho hopefully, we have the cameraman, so he always are. They are always on the chip with the memory sims card, and they know, hey, no, guys, you have to put them on or the audio or whatever. So that term. So right now, I don't know. Probably in the U.S. is completely different than in Europe because we have so many brands, and you guys have so many brands we didn't see them before. Um, So how do you see the brands right now in your industry and which ones are you think they are growing much? Yeah. Um, well, we're at a time right now when there is just a lot. I mean, it, every brand is doing really good stuff. I feel like if you're not um, putting out good yep. shoes right now, you're irrelevant. Um, a couple of brands that have really stuck, stuck that I think are just consistently across their full line making really good product. Um, I'd say Asics, yep. New Balance, Saucony. Um, those three are just doing really good stuff from racing, performance, daily training, max cushion. The full line is just really strong. And I think over the next year, you're going to see some really good shoes, especially Saucony. I'll, I'll call it right here. I think it's going to have the top racing yep. shoe next year. Um, we'll have a little bit more information on running where guys will share it uh, over the next couple we months when we, uh, yeah. when we head off. Eh, Connor nos comentaba, le he preguntado un poco por las marcas que en los Estados Unidos o cómo lo ve él a nivel de industria, nos comenta que marcas como ASICS, eh, New Balance y Saucony son las que para él mejor están trabajando ya no solo la línea de competición sino también la línea de entrenamientos y ya nos avanza que Saucony está apretando y mucho el turbo y que veremos también una nueva zapatilla a finales de 2024 Suponemos, no sé si es algo nuevo. It's a completely different endorphin elite or it's a new model. Did you know that? Uh, I guess I can't say too much. Okay. But uh, yes, it would be under that same umbrella. Okay. And uh, and I'd say the the secret formula with it is the foam. It's a foam that uh, is very experimental, very new, but I think it's going to shock a lot of people. It's going to be a 3D print or no? <laughs> not quite, not quite. Um, okay or the formulation how to do the phone. okay um and what about the any specific model not your yeah let's say your favorite model right now and your yeah. all-time favorite model le he preguntado por el modelo Ooh, actual favorito uh, para él y modelos que con anterioridad le han llamado la atención 
they can be a all all school model so yeah um i would say that at least the shoe that i've been using the most the past year um was probably um the new balance more v4 okay i put a lot of miles in that i like high cushion i like high stack um i will say the new v5 that'll be coming out mm -hmm. soon uh is a little bit different of a shoe so not quite as much in my wheelhouse it's a little bit more stable a little bit firmer i'd say it's going to be a little bit more in line with what the bondi yep. is still a really good shoe um but the v4 was was my favorite um all-time favorite i'd say uh there's quite a few but one that stuck out to me was the original nike pegasus oh, turbo man. a fun shoe yep. a bouncy shoe and we talked a little bit uh earlier but the the re-release will be coming out soon it'll be called uh the pegasus uh plus, pegasus plus yeah. uh, they got the the same yeah, colors yeah. same design i actually they put it on the outsole right then same night the pegasus turbo like on a you know the old things right okay so you got the right. more v4 right now yeah okay gotcha I, I i don't know why i thought you will pick the nova blast i'm sure you can do whatever you want you know but. The, the Nova is a good shoe, but I'd say between Nova Blast and Super Blast, I'm actually wearing Super Blast even okay. a little bit more. Yeah. And the new Super Blast coming out, uh, yep. we'll have some more information on that very soon. Yeah. That's another shoe that I think people are going to be really excited about. 26, right? I think it's on 26 of this month, I think so, or... Yeah, I think so. Ok, nos comentaba, le hemos preguntado por las zapatillas, nos ha dicho que la más antigua o la que le gustaba mucho fue la Pegasus Turbo y que actualmente, si pudiese escoger también porque le gusta mucha amortiguación, es la Moro V4 de New Balance, aunque ya está probando la V5, que es un poquito más dura, más densa de Fresh Foam y seguramente también un puntito eh, más estable. Um, so we are seeing the tendencies, we are seeing so many things on the market, so, so yeah, so weird things. Um, where do you think the, the market is going? So in a what way? I mean, did you get the question? Yeah. I mean, the super, the um, super phones were, so we are talking about super phones every minute. So uh, four or five years ago, no one expect this growth right on a super foams and no one thing about plates or and now we have recovery shoes with plates i mean it's crazy and i don't know what's going to happen in three four five years what do you think yeah and i i've been thinking about this question a lot i've been asking a lot of really smart people about this question and i think no one 100 knows um you know i think when we talk homes no one saw that coming either But if I just had to guess, um, one thing I would say is, although we're seeing stack heights go higher and higher, yep. I think that trend will continue, but I think we're also going to see the trend of different stacks with super foam. So um, we've seen shoes like the New Balance SC Pacer yep. V2 that's coming out soon. That's a little bit more medium to low stack height. We, we've also seen other shoes with really low stack height super foams. I don't think any of those have been uh, really well, but I think there's potential for a really good super foam low stack shoe. Another thing that I we're just going to keep pushing the super foams to the next level. Like I mentioned with that new Saucony shoe, they're doing some fun things. Every brand now has a super foam. So now how do you get your super foam to be even better than your competition? Mm -hmm. And the third thing I'd say is with good shoes and foams are on the market, prices are going to have to come. The prices are getting higher and higher. So now we're going to see, can brands make these amazing shoes at lower price points? We're already starting to see it and it'll continue. People will love this, the last point. Okay, tres cosas que nos comenta Conor de un poco la tendencia y cómo él cree que van a ir las cosas. La primera, que las zapatillas con menos perfil, eh, tipo la nueva Pacer V3 que saldrá ahora en el mercado, Pacer V2, subirá a los perfiles, con lo cual este tipo de zapatillas más de perfil bajo, ¿cómo van a ir subiendo? Dos, las super espumas, que cada vez más iremos en tendencia a mejorarlas. Eh, nos lo compara con este modelo de Saucony que va a salir próximamente, que por lo que nos dice va a ser un cambio. Y finalmente el tema del precio, que parece, o claro, en un momento en el que estamos a máximos, él cree que va a ser o 
cómo van a ser las marcas capaces de mantener toda esta tecnología a precios más reducidos. Así que, que lo veremos. Any, so we are seeing, for example, ultra running, right? So I'm, I'm going for ultra, 100%. I mean, I'm, I think ultra has the potential and they got something different. And if they invest on that, on marketing, on get some new athletes, on... I don't know, some sponsorships, they can grow, at least in Europe. They are very strong in trail. Uh, in UTME, they're on the top three shoe counting, so they are always there. In US, well, this is a US brand, so they, you know more than no one else. But I think in the roadside, they, have st they still have, I mean, this, they, they can go up. I don't know. Do you have the same vision or do you think Ultra it's singular and they stay on just singular runners yeah we we had a really good success with ultra um you know four or five years ago the last couple of years i i will say the brand's been slightly on a decline from a numbers uh -huh. perspective here at the warehouse um i think they had a couple mistakes on their end i think they were a little slow to uh upgrade their phones their fits Uh, across the board, not only were a little bit off, yep. but they didn't do a great job in explaining slim last. They had yeah. a couple different lasts. There's four lasts. Uh, yes. And then third, I would say, uh, I feel like there were a couple um, people here at the warehouse who felt there was some durability issues, issues with yeah. certain models. I will say that looking into the next year or two, I think there's definitely potential to go up quite a bit. Um, they've got the right people on their team. I understand the issues that they uh, they faced the last couple of years. So uh, me as well, I'm bullish on the company and I, I think make some progress and uh, get back to where they were. Yeah, they, also, we've got the drops. Now. now they have now they've got uh, not just zero drop options, yep, but this some is more. Drop yeah, options that was that was my other. question. Do you think the move to the four millimeter drop is going to grow the sales or do you think they, it's like I mean, cause you can discuss about it because no ultra was always uh, zero drop, uh, food shape, bruh, and then goes up to the four millimeter. Do you think it's a marketing strategy or it's because they want to? Um, you know, hard to say, but potentially a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, I think we've seen brands like Topo yeah. who uh, have a similar philosophy, but have different drops that have done really well for us here at the warehouse. So I think as long as Ultra maintains their core philosophies, dials in the fit, that's my number one. You got to dial in that fit. People come to Ultra for the fit. Uh, the I don't think it should hurt the brand. And if anything, I know a lot of runners who have switched over to Topo because they don't want to wear zero drop every day. So I think more options isn't necessarily a bad thing. Yep as long as they stay uh, true to their, their core philosophies. Eh, Conor, hemos, hemos hablado un momento, un ratito, sobre Altra y comentaba básicamente que yo le he preguntado si la jugada de los 4 milímetros es algo de estrategia de marketing o si realmente es necesidad y nos hablaba que, que no cree que eso le penalice para nada siempre y cuando mantengan eh, las hormas, sobre todo, que es seguramente el punto más a favor que tiene la marca norteamericana y que están trabajando para que la gente tenga más conocimiento de ella. De hecho, a mí me costaba diferenciar o saber que tenían cuatro tipos de horma. Ahora ya, por conocimiento, y si no, ya os lo digo, la marca Altra tiene, según los modelos, cuatro diferentes tipos de anchura en la zona delantera. If you can split or divide uh, a shoe in three parts, let's say midsole, outsole, and upper, which ones are you picking from different brands? Le he preguntado a Connor si tuviese que dividir una zapatilla en tres partes, ¿de qué marca escogería el upper, media suela y suela? And are we talking for a, a racing shoe, uh, a training that's shoe? That's a question. Um, you can say in both. Let's say, okay. yeah, let's say two shoes. Let's create two okay. shoes. Yeah. Um, daily trainer. Yep. Um, I would go with... Uh, I like a lot of stack underfoot. So um, the new New Balance Balos that'll be coming out this summer has that new fresh foam with a uh, that it has a new like a uh, super critical. I, I believe it's a TPE -E okay. type foam. Really, really nice foam. So I do that with a, you know, 40 millimeter stack um, from an outsole perspective. Um, 
I'd probably do something like, uh, uh, I don't know, like like a, a very thin, strategically played rum rubber. That's so it, it's very minimal, okay. but uh, get that extra grip okay. just in the right spot. And then upper, uh, maybe something like, I don't know, just for fun. So uh, something comfy or not too much, not too much plush. Yeah, or... I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking something comfy like a, uh, my favorite upper would probably be. Uh, like the endorphin speed? Uh, you know what? I'll go something crazy, like a, an original uh, Nike uh, flying oh, it upper. Oh, crazy, yeah. Yeah, that's fun, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, good. And um, that, did you say the, the competition shoe or no? Yeah, on the racing side, yeah, I would go with, uh, right now, I'll, I'll go with that new Evo 1 midsole because it has been proven to be the lightest uh -huh. uh, on the market. I, I really like a lightweight shoe. On the outsole, yeah. I would go for um, the original New Balance RC um, Elite, or there's a couple of Adidas that, uh, it's, a, it's a very specific type of outsole that's... Um, almost like a laser I, I don't know exactly it's but, like laser and gray oh yeah what model i mean the adios pro takumi or yeah yeah i think i think the takumi had, had one elite had it but it's a very unique type of okay. outsole and then upper uh i'd go for ooh. i go for the meta speed i go for the meta speed i love it yeah, yeah. Meta Speed actually is a pretty good thing upper. I'd go for that. I mean, in general, my pick in in racing shoe is the Meta Speed actually right now. Yeah. Really. I also like the, the SC. Sky, the, sky or the Edge. Uh, the Sky because it's the one I tested, not the Edge. But uh -huh. uh, yeah, I run a pair in Paris. Uh, the last two, uh, yeah, in, in it was in April. Yeah, in April in the marathon. So. But yeah, and the SC Elite, I love the the new fuel cell, but they got some troubles and issues on the on the hill, right? So I had to cut it. I got some blisters, so it, it hurts a little bit. I run Barcelona Marathon with them, but um, yeah, so a little bit. Uh, well, okay. So uh, uh, is there still any brand you are thinking about to test it, or you couldn't test it? I mean, for example, I don't know. There's probably spanish brands or brazilian brands or something weird for example i would love to yeah. try the atreyu right you have the atreyu uh in, in oh, austin yeah. i didn't try but when i see them i see like oh that's cool yeah is there no uh we we love atreyu uh, michael we, we see him at austin every year he's a great guy and uh he they they do really great product for how small of a team they are definitely one to look out for uh if there, i if there was a brand that i could try you know i've been hearing quite of diodora recently oh yeah and some of their carbon, the Gara carbon. Yeah, yeah i have the Gara carbon it's really we tested that's cool and is it good yep. it's a premium shoe i mean you have metrics upper you have piva foam it's comfy it's not super like, like super max style. it's like no no alpha flies, no vapor flies. It's like just a medium, and it's yep. cool. So get more stability. You're a little bit go low to the ground. It's like similar, but more uh, cushion upper, more more comfy upper. Like the the ones you said, the Pacer V2. It's like a remix between yep. this one. Yeah, I love it. I like it, and the outsole works good. The 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 outsole rubber. So yeah, I run a half marathon with them. Uh, one month ago or something. So yeah, that's cool. Okay, any advices to give us someone who wants to buy a shoe? Three advices? Yeah. Um, it's probably the most important I mean, question I'd say, in the chat. Yeah, I'd say uh, definitely uh, think to yourself and uh, analyze like what type of runner are you? Are you new to the sport? Okay. Are you, are you uh, a seasoned veteran? because I think a lot of people right now, they hear super yep. shoes, they hear it's the most expensive, best shoe, and they have to get a super shoe. And, you know, really 90% of people out just getting into the sport do not need a super shoe. That's right. Um, so then I'd say, you know, if, if, 
if you can uh, get into a store, um, you know, we have retail stores here at the warehouse, mm -hmm. or if you just have an ability to try on quite a few shoes. Like here, um, if we have people who can't get into the store, we offer free returns and uh, free shipping and returns. So you can buy a bunch of shoes, try them all on and, and send back what back. you don't need. But yeah, you gotta you gotta put on multiple pairs because you can't you can't just try one shoe. Um, third would be, um, uh, you know, probably, uh, don't say the design, uh, you know, make, make, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, it's funny. Cause that's usually what it comes down to when we're selling shoes is the color. Yeah. People want the shoe that looks good as the color. I don't think that's necessarily that important, but I know for a lot of runners out out there it is so if you do have to pick a shoe that's got a good design or a good sure it has the appropriate uh <laughs> design benefits in terms of cushioning support okay so we love the i, I like to heard the second one because this is tough to get in europe i mean you cannot go to the store and get for four or five pairs i mean and then test them and if the ones you don't like you can give them back and return the money or whatever so I mean, I know because every time I go to the U.S., the States, I'll go to the stores and there's a, an atmosphere. There's a different atmosphere in the stores than in Europe. I mean, people is asking you, what do you want? You can use the plates. I can see your your guidance or whatever. And the same sales guy can help you depending on what your foot strike or right so this is a a good point and i think this is the one stores in at least in spain i don't know in the rest of of europe but at least in spain they have to go in this way and i think they can change the experience for the consumer so that's a good point that's a good point okay last question connor anything you can tell us a little bit or something about new prototypes what it's coming next Let's say yeah. until yeah next 24 we know the atmos we know this the things we saw in in austin but anything new or something weird yeah i mean we, we discussed a few today but uh one brand is on look out for is puma yep um puma's got some really cool shoes coming out over the next year um a brand that you know i, I think is maybe a little bit more popular in europe but in the u.s It's been pretty irrelevant for a while, and now back, and they are strong. Puma, right? Um, Puma, uh, Adidas. I think in, over the next couple months, you'll start seeing some teasing. You might have already seen it if uh, if you're looking on Instagram real yep. deep of some new racing shoes um, that are using some new foam compounds that are really really nice. I think uh, people are going to be excited. One One of them is a little bit more simple of a sh really good price point. So, okay. um, yeah. So do you think, so uh, Puma is probably one of the, let's say the trending right now, probably they are, do you think they can grow up fast? Oh, for sure. We've already seen, uh, they're, they're, they're definitely not only from a, a product standpoint, but just from sales, uh, or quick. And, and uh, I think, I think they're, they're going to do some damage in 2024, 2025. Wow. Bueno, nos comenta Connor eso, sobre todo Puma, con todo lo que está lanzando y con lo que lanzará en 2024-2025, y luego Adidas, que próximamente dentro de los modelos de competición eh, ya está preparando nuevos compuestos eh, y nuevas mejoras para Adios Pro 3, supongo, Takumi, eh, Adios 9, etc, etc. Ok, so I think that's it, we got it. We got the, the, the interview, let's say, yeah, I'm gonna say the interview, we, we used to call them like road talking review. Thank you, Connor. Thank you to be here. Just a, always a pleasure to talk to you, to chat with you, to discuss a little bit. Um, you are the first time, so you have the first, let's say, English um, speaker in, in the chat. So it's, it's a game changing for us. So thanks and thanks for your time, Connor. Hey. Gracias por su tiempo. This is no what puedo, I this is what I was expecting for, from you. Uh, no puedo conversar no uh, po in español uh, in español, pero uh, Did you talk a little bit? Did you did you learn in your high school or uh, 
estudio, um, pero uh, necesito uh, ah, estudiar más tiempo. más tiempo. Next time in Spanish. <laughs> next maybe, time we can do. Time. Okay, Connor, good. Good to stay here with you. Good to chat as always. And hope to see you soon, December, six months only. Perfect. We'll see you then. Gracias, amigos. Thank you, Connor. Gracias. Thank you. Hasta la próxima.